Hello, and welcome to today's issue of Simply Saturday, where I get to show you a card that is fast and easy to make. Today, we will be using this stamp set called Best Butterflies. I wanna show it to you in the annual catalog. It's on page 37, because I wanna point out a couple of things. The stamp set itself is called Best Butter Butterflies, and the coordinating dies are called Build a Butterfly Dies. Now, I think that the best way to order these products is when they are offered as a bundle, and that saves you 10%. When you buy the stamp set, combined with the coordinating dies, or sometimes it's with a punch, and then it saves you some money. Often what I have found happens um, to me and even to my customers is they think maybe they only want the stamp set and that they wouldn't ever use the dies, only to come to find out later that they want the dies and then end up paying a little bit more for them, or vice versa. Today, we're mostly using the dies, but we are gonna use the words from the stamp set. So I just wanted to point that out about the bundle. All right, a couple things we're going to do. We will be doing a little bit of die cutting, so I have my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine here ready to go. Let's talk about the pieces of paper that you're going to need. For the base, I'm using basic black cardstock. This piece is five and a half by eight and a half, and it is scored and folded at four and a quarter. The reason that I like to go over some of these basics, even for those of you who have been watching for a while, is someone might stumble on this card tutorial and it's the first one that they've ever seen. So I do wanna make sure that I explain what we're using. All right, so that's going to be our card base. Then I have a layer. The layer I'm using is Flirty Flamingo and it measures four by five and a quarter. And then I have a piece of Hues of Happiness designer series paper. Now, you might recognize it more from this side. We actu I actually did a Simply Saturday card using this print, um, and I've also done some other cards using the large flowers out of that same designer series paper. But I'm telling you that this side kind of stumps me. It's a rainbow-ish look. It looks like paint on a canvas. And when you look at the whole 12 by 12 sheet, to me, it's a little intimidating. Like, what am I gonna do with that? So I'm super excited about the card I'm showing you today, and I will show you some extras at the end as well with some of the different pieces of the paper cut um, so that it shows the different colors. But I am loving this idea, and now I'm super excited to use this paper, which previously was a little bit intimidating to me. So this piece is three and three quarter by five. All right, then you're also gonna need some scraps of basic black cardstock. Um, so one big scrap or several little scraps, this is what we're gonna do first. We're gonna get our butterflies cut out. So I'm grabbing the dies called Build a Butterfly Dies, and I'm using our largest butterfly and the smallest. Now there are a bunch of other pieces in those dies. Um, my dies are way down at the other end of the desk. So instead of moving, let me just show them to you again here. So there's little pieces of different kinds of wings. There's the, bo the body of the butterfly, both, both a large and a small. So there's bunches of things. We're using the largest and the small of the full butterfly, okay? So I'm gonna get my layers lined up here. Now I did notice this morning that my acrylic um, pads here are kind of starting to get a little dirty. There's a little bit of cardstock that has been pressed into some of these grooves. So before I begin, I am going to grab a little alcohol prep pad. I've talked about these before. I use them for many different applications, but I buy these from Amazon and I will put a shopping link down below to make it easy for you to find um, below the, in the description of this video. And one thing that I do like to use these for is to just clean up these little acrylic pads. Not only do they get a little bit sticky and gummy from when we've been using adhesive, or if you're using a little bit of washi tape or post-it tape when you put your dies on here, but even just from general use, they kind of get gunky. And then um, some of these little ridges that end up in here, which are perfectly normal, 
kind of begin to collect the little bits of cardstock. So you can see I'm just scrubbing along here and look, I mean, it didn't even look too dirty, but you can see how much I was able to pick up and how much better that's looking. So again, another little extra tool outside of our glorious Stampin' Up! products that you might want to try out. All right, so I have my mini here and I need a large butterfly. Ooh, this scrap is just barely big enough. Do you see that? And I need a small butterfly, and I'm actually gonna need two of the small ones. So after I run this through, I'll either run this through again on here, or like I said, I have plenty of black scrap. So I'm going to use, I have a one plate, and then I have a two plate, my cardstock, my dies with the little, edge part, kind of the sharp part, so to speak, goes down. And then another number two plate on top of that. All right, and then I'm gonna send this through so that we get our beautiful butterfly die cuts. Now, when I made this card um, previously, I did do my cutting on my big machine and I found that running the die forward and backward um, helped it to release from the paper a little bit easier. So that's what I just did here, but we will see what happens with the mini. Okay, we're gonna, well, we need one more butterfly, so let's do that. I'm just gonna slide these out of the way and we'll talk about it in a second. Okay, oh, that guy is stuck. And... Where's my take your pick tool? Here we go, just to get that pried up. All right, and then I do need one more small. So let's get that right now. And I think I have enough space on this piece of cardstock. Let's see if I do. Oh yeah, that'll work just fine. Okay, and then just for safety, um, for precaution, I'm going to go ahead and run this through forward and back as well. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about popping your paper out of the dies. All right, one thing that you can do, especially when you have a die that is kind of intricate, is you can reach for your little um, foam mat. Now this is an old version of the die cut cleaning brush. There's actually an attachment that goes on to your um, take your pick tool. I still have this one so I just reached for it this morning. What you're going to do is just scrub right through the die and that's going to help it release not only from the die but also all the little bits. Okay, I'm gonna bring in some white paper under here because we're working with such dark things. I want it to pop a little bit. So let me get a piece of grid paper and we'll pull that in here. Okay. So here's my small butterfly and you can see that nearly all of the little um, parts popped out. I've got one here I need to help, one over here. You just kind of have to coax them, coax them out. And then one little part right here. All right, I'm going to mention something else. Let me get this guy off of there. Um, you can see I have a little bit of black splotches on my fingers. This is because at the very end of this video, I'm going to show you a special technique that I've never shown in any of my card tutorials before. But when I do it, I'm going to show you how not to get ink on your hands. I was just kind of going about it this morning and didn't really worry about it. And then now I'm kind of stained for a little while today. All right, let's go back to our other butterflies. We have the other small one and the large one and it looks like this needs just a little bit of help. So again, you can use your die brush tool or you can just take your, take your pick tool and pop these little pieces out. While I was doing this, I thought also about how perfect these little 
polka dots are, I will probably start to save those and put them in a little bag because I think that those are going to come in handy for a card. I'm not a huge crazy saver of little scraps and bits, but sometimes when I see something that I really might use, like those polka dots, then I might save them. Okay, and then this one also, look, it just needs a little bit. Remember, these two I did not use the dye brush at all. I'm just using my take your pick tool and knocking those pieces out. All right, it takes a moment. It's actually a little therapeutic, the feeling of popping those little pieces out. But if you don't like it at all, the dye brush is the fastest way to go. All right, so I'm gonna get these out of the way. Even my little polka dots for today. All right. We have our pieces cut out and now the rest of the card goes together super fast. So I've got my card base. I'm going to, uh, this needs a good press with my bone folder. There we go, I like that better. And I'm gonna glue on my layer. This is the Flirty Flamingo layer. I'm gonna show you something. Um, I saw another demonstrator do this. It just caught my attention for a second and I thought it was kind of interesting. So I tried it. Let me get this glued on and then I'll tell you what I'm referring to. So what I have here is actually um, a toothpaste cap, the kind that you like flip open. And she was showing how she rests her glue in it like that to keep the glue pointing down and then just uses the glue out of that. I thought that was kind of cute. Now I've also shown you how to make a cute glue holder out of cardstock and DSP, but I thought that this was kind of ingenious to just grab a household item that you would normally throw out and put it to use. All right, now I'm going to attach this piece of our designer series paper. And I'm gonna choose the pinkier part at the top. Of course, you could go whichever way you want. There's no right or wrong or top or bottom of this print. Okay, now, the only stamping that we're going to do, and this is pretty interesting um, that this happened while I'm filming, because typically I would do my stamping before I do any gluing just in case there's a mistake, but we're doing one stamp and it's going right onto this designer series paper. And since it's already glued on, we're just gonna do it on here. So I'm going to use all the love out of our Best Butterflies stamp set. And I'm using my Memento Black ink because this is a photopolymer stamp. And also because it's got a pretty bold font I'm going to, first of all, test it on a scrap. I wanna see what I'm gonna get before, especially because I only have one chance on my card this time. I can't flip it over since I did already glue it down. So note to self, you might wanna stamp first before gluing. So I have my um, mat, which is also going to help give me a nice image. Here's just a scrap piece, and I think that's gonna look really good. All right, so I'm gonna keep my mat in place, put my card on top, and do the same step. I can't quite reach my black ink pad. There we go, that's a little better. All right, now, as you'll see at the end, depending on which words you use, you might change the um, placement, but I'm gonna put this one just in this bottom left corner. Give it a second for that ink to soak into the paper and lift. All right, there we have it. That's really all the stamping we're going to do on this card. We're gonna to go to our butterfly cutouts now. What you want to do is just lay them out and see where you think you're gonna want them. Look how pretty that is with the colors showing through. So you could do a large one at the bottom and the two small ones up top, whatever layout you are in the mood for. 
All right, so we're gonna glue those on. I'll start with this large one. I'm going to put my liquid glue down the middle, so down that big stripe of the body, and then also kind of crosswise. Then I'm just gonna dab it as light as can be on some of these larger black areas, the paper areas where there's some, not so many cutouts. You don't need a lot. And attach butterfly number one. For the little guy, some glue right down the middle. And then these parts aren't really cut out. They're more like little tiny holes. They're accents, but it's not gonna hurt any uh, any bit for that glue to be there. And then there's ni a nice big spot on the side of the wings. That will work. And that's going to hold this one down. And I don't mind on mine that some of the edges are not down. I feel like it gives it a little bit of an airy look and it even causes a little natural shadow to occur. So I'm not worried about every little bit of this being glued. I just want it glued down enough that it's going to stay put. All right, and this one. Now, when I first uh, thought up this card in my brain, this is all I was gonna do, is just the black butterfly die cuts on the colorful paper. But when I got to finishing, I felt like it needed something, and what do we always do? We usually go to rhinestones or an embellishment like that. But instead, I wanted to give this a splatter. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can do splatter, and Sadly, I feel like you have to just play with a few and find out what is your favorite. Um, you can certainly use our little, um, gosh, I call these misters right this second. I'm forgetting what the proper name is. So once I look it up, I will write it down in the description. But um, you can fill these with either water or rubbing alcohol and you can add color to them or any number of different things and use them as a spritz. It works great depending on the look that you want. For me today, it would have made the paper way too soggy. So that was not a good way to do it. Then I reached for my aqua painter and I thought this was gonna be the answer. One thing you can do with your aqua painters is put a little bit of ink into the lid of an ink pad and use this as watercolor. The reason this wasn't great for me this time is it was too watered down for the look that I want. I want really black looking spots, not kind of like watercolor grayed out black. So that was not the answer for today. So let me show you what I um, found that worked for me today. So you can take any kind of a little um, container or I just used my block because it was handy and I want to take a refill of ink. So because I'm using black, I have my Memento refill. And all I did, you can see I've already started it. So all I did is I did two drops of refill. Right now I'm gonna do one because I already have a puddle on here. So one or two drops of refill ink. And then I did use my water painter just because it was handy to add a drop or two of water. And I'm doing this by squeezing the um, barrel of the painter. So I'm just squeezing until I get a drop or two to fall out. That's all I needed it for. Now I'm just reaching for a paintbrush. So this is just a inexpensive, you know, like from a craft store paintbrush. And I found that this mixture of ink and a little bit of water was a lot more concentrated than using my water painter alone. So I'm getting a nice black inky um, juice going on here. Then what I'm gonna do, and this is where it gets messy, so hold on a second, I'm gonna set my brush down and I'm just gonna put on a glove. These are just those like food handler gloves um, this is how you're gonna avoid getting black ink splotches on you. You might even have a bunch of gloves because when COVID first started, everybody was wearing gloves and all this stuff. So um, just grab any kind of a latex glove or a vinyl glove, a dishwashing glove, whatever you want, just to protect this hand especially. And you're gonna wanna protect your surface because our little splatter is gonna go beyond our card. So. 
get my brush. I've got my um, ink and it's nice and loaded up here in the bristles of my brush. And then I'm just gonna take an extra block. You can do this on your finger like this, or I prefer to use a block. And what I'm gonna do is just hold the block up a little ways from my paper. I'll show you on the scratch paper first, and I'm gonna tap it. See the beautiful little splotches I get? Oh my gosh, they are perfect for what I was looking for. So depending on where you want them, you might have to fiddle with placement a little bit. And I'm just adding a teeny bit. If you tap lighter, you're probably gonna get a smaller splotch. And if you tap heavier, you're gonna get some of those darker splotches. And it's just enough to give it a little whimsical look. Oh my goodness, I was so pleased with the final outcome of that. Again, these black specks went everywhere and had I not had my glove on, I would have got more specks on me. So hopefully that will save you if you don't wanna have black ink on you. Now, that is our card for the day. Let me pull in a few of the others that have different colors and different layout. I'm gonna get rid of this so we don't get any of that ink on our other cards. Here's today's card. Here's one with the green and the yellow look, and this one is Granny Apple Green. Then I have this one. So we have All the Love, You're My Bestie, So Glad You Exist. Oh, and then I also did this one so I could use Sending Good Vibes and the blues. So, so many different color combinations just from the paper alone. And the exact same process on all of them. Three butterflies, one word, and some little splatters, if you like that little whimsical look. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for sticking with it. Um, throughout the mess of the sprinkles and the splatters. That was kind of fun today. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, I invite you to do so and make sure that you ring the bell so that you get a notification every time I put up a new um, video here on YouTube. And a lot of information you can find down below in the description of this video, including dimensions, products, and shopping links. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.